I'm gonna go put the baby down. All right. I'll have. Yeah, have fun, guys. I will uh, be in the chat. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you, Ed, and have a good one, man. All right. Let's stay in touch. We'll do. We'll do. All right, uh, we live now. All right, well, welcome back, everyone. Uh, in case you were expecting hypnotics, you've probably noticed that I'm substantially older, balder, and less British, but I'm still here with the Hummingbird game nonetheless. And uh, once again, running it on uh, real hardware, got my copy right here. And yeah, some of you might have seen uh, Kraken Zero play a little bit of this last night. I'm going to uh, try to uh, get as far into it as I can in about, uh, you know, 40 minutes, an hour, whatever's on the schedule. Uh, gonna drop the difficulty down to easy because the only thing that changes is how much health you have. Uh, get a maximum of five hit points on easy and I'm gonna need it because I'm gonna get shot a lot uh we're gonna go with hold direction while firing because that lets you uh retreat while you're firing and uh yeah let's just get to it one of the first things that uh you notice about this game if uh you're familiar with the 32x hardware at all it does not like full screen graphics like very much. It is very difficult to hit 60 hertz when drawing full screen like 256 color graphics. So the fact that this is running so smoothly with this level of detail is incredible for this console. Uh, just the amount of detail that they have in the background layers is pretty incredible. And I love just like the subtle animation, like going up to flower here. There we go. Just come on, drink from the flower. You know you want to. Can't remember if it's pressing the special button. Maybe I need to fly around a little bit more first. It's been a minute since I played this game. I have a Genesis Model 1 hooked up to the 32X. It is one of the very last Model 1s before they switched over to the VA7 motherboard. Ah, here we go. So this is kind of the best of both worlds. It still has the original Genesis sound circuit, but the video output on it is a lot cleaner than the early model ones. It doesn't have as much of a problem with the jail bars or the rainbow banding. And this crystal spits out the uh, weapons. Max level for a weapon is three, so we're gonna just wait here and get to full power, pick up a shield. We're gonna avoid picking up the hourglass because that just uh, slows the gameplay down. It's useful for a few sections of the game, but this early on, not so much. Just gonna float around and take out these nasty insects. I love the music in this game. Ah, I didn't want to pick up that weapon, though. 
Okay, this is this is fine. I can work with this. Or uh, that is the tricky thing. As with all shmups, some weapons are a lot better than others, so you want to make sure to hold on to the good stuff. Couple of different types of gameplay. In this level, we want to take out all the insects around a couple of different points in the level so the uh, birds can feast on the flowers in peace. Oh, and I just got eaten by a toad. That's actually probably for the best because now I've got my good weapon. What can be kind of tricky though is uh, when you die, it reloads the level in whatever state you were in when you entered. So in this case, that's a good thing because I entered with full health and a really good weapon. But if you kind of got through a level by the skin of your teeth and only have one health going in, then uh, <laughs> you can be in for a rough time. And I love how the gray flowers get their color back when you uh, finish off the insects. There are a lot of really subtle visual cues in this to let you know what's going on. Now, every once in a while in this level, you come across one of these uh, large rotund bugs and you got to take all of them out. And you've got to do it in order, otherwise uh, it'll act as uh, basically a wall. You know, it'll goal keep you pretty hard. Like this one is invincible, so I need to go back and find the one I missed. Here we go. Just every time you get hit, you uh, lose a level of your powered up weapon. Fortunately, there are a lot of weapon drops. This should be our first auto-scroller. So this is a more conventional kind of shmup level. Very sort of R-type with birds vibe here. I kind of like how minimalist your uh, setup is. There's no HUD or anything. Uh, the way you can tell how much health you have is uh, when you get hit or pick up uh, health, you uh, see uh, birds circling around you briefly, and however many birds there are is how much health you have left. So just very clean appearance, very little in the way of distractions. Right off the back, right off the bat, got uh, a lot of extra health. Pick up this shield. 
Get back in business. So uh, fun to watch. So fun. Those little packing peanut looking things I picked up are a special weapon that I need in order to break past a wall here. And here I'm gonna need to like sneak past this uh, toad. Kind of tricky uh, because I gotta get pretty close to him. And there we go. Get down here. Destroy the barrier, and that went pretty smoothly. Ah, metastasis. This is one of the trickier auto-scrollers in the game, because it goes horizontal, it goes vertical, and there's always a lot of enemies around. But this has some of the best pixel art in the game. I especially love the uh, waterfall effect. It's one of the best looking effects uh, on the system, in my opinion. Pretty simple palette cycling, but it is very effective. Yeah, just playing this game uh, just really makes me wish that we had uh, gotten another Echo game in this era. Just uh, imagining how the art could have evolved on uh, the 32X or the Saturn platform. Oh, oh no, don't, don't eat. Ah, oh, don't eat me. Ah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that uh, to say the Saturn wasn't fun to develop for is kind of an understatement. Uh, and things have just gotten real bad here because that uh, kind of springy looking weapon, not really useful for killing enemies. Its uh, main job is uh, later on in the game, you have to push kind of a bomb uh, down to a specific location without destroying it. God, just the amount of detail in this, the butterflies floating around, just the even like individual leaf detail on a lot of the trees. Okay, so I could pick up that shield after it was, uh, after the chameleon was off screen. Oh yeah, I am definitely looking forward to Three Dirty Dwarves up next. Now, I've heard, uh, I've watched a lot of uh, John Burton's YouTube channel. Uh, John Burton, the uh, lead programmer for Traveler's Tales, uh, worked on Sonic 3D Blast, Sonic R, all that. 
He seems to have a particular fondness for the uh, Saturn, uh, mostly because it was such a bizarre platform and he liked the challenge of it. The cave levels here. <laughs> I guess you could call this a cave shooter. And now any of the Shmups fans are just rolling their eyes and groaning right now. But uh, this is where the game has a bit of a difficulty spike. So my main objective here is I need to find more of those uh, yellow packing peanut looking items so I can blow up the wall that's blocking the exit. What I love about this level is you didn't see these kinds of really dark color palettes on the base Genesis hardware very often because you were so limited by the color palettes and that really affects the darker tones more than anything else. So you can tell that the artists had a really good time with these levels. Just there's a lot of stuff on the 32X that was released. It was kind of like, okay, this probably could have been done on the Genesis, but definitely not this game. Oh. So, deadly water drops. One thing I really like that I know uh, was proving to be a little bit of a headache for uh, Kraken last night was uh, just the overall control of the game where it really makes a solid effort to model uh, air turbulence in flight. So uh, you can't really accuse the control of being super precise or anything, but it definitely feels like you're a small hummingbird trying to zip around. This is something where I think if there's one of those hourglass power-ups around, there is. Okay. Hopefully. There we go. Give me a little more room to play with the dodging. These hourglasses are centered in the bubble. <laughs> the real trick, though, will be if I can manage to get through back to the exit without dying. I really hope that there are some health drops around. Because I really don't want to go into next level with low health. But that's what we're going to do, apparently. Okay. Trying to hold on to the weapon that I want, but 
had it there for a moment. There we go. Ah, uh, not quite. Here, there, there we go. Excellent. I feel it's like the avoidance of power-ups is one of those uh, interesting little shmup conventions that doesn't get the uh, same type of attention as just the general bullet hell stuff of avoiding enemy projectiles. But I definitely need this shield. And I always forget what those little DNA strand looking things do. I know it's some kind of special weapon, but I always forget about it. Oh, <laughs> carnivorous plants. Yeah, you know, the, the plants have got to eat, too. Okay, I think we're in a little better shape than last attempt. Break free, break free. Go really fast. Made it. Another kind of traditional smup stage here, but I love the background. The skybox just looks fantastic. And one of the things that I like about the 32X is because, you know, it was essentially just two SH2 processors and a frame buffer to draw to. Uh, you could do some really interesting stuff with, you know, essentially unlimited layers of scrolling if that's what you wanted to do. Uh, if you've played Genesis games, you're definitely familiar with the line scrolling effects, but you're not limited to just scrolling lines on this, so... All came down to cart size. Yeah, I mean, even to this day, you think about, like, on the Switch, uh, some games have been kind of hamstrung by the uh, publisher not wanting to uh, buy a large enough cart size. I know that uh, Dark Souls Remastered, for instance, had a pretty substantial audio downgrade on the Switch because they wanted to fit onto a 4 gig cart.
Yeah, some of the homebrew games that have come out recently, like uh, Pure Solar and uh, Demons of Astaborg most recently, just absolutely gigantic cart sizes. I'm really interested to see uh, what the uh, Symphony of the Night Genesis D-Make ends up weighing in at whenever it's finished. It's still very early in development, but that's a very cool project that uh, anybody interested in Genesis stuff should uh, check out on YouTube. Most of the insects in this game, bad, but we like this guy because he opens our path to the end of the level. And another dark cave system here, kind of the termite mound. This is where the game starts to really ramp up in difficulty. A lot more environmental based hazards. This is one of my favorite weapons. Its utility is not fantastic, but I just love the sound effect it makes. On for this one. Yeah, we got to play a little bit of Pong. Break open those blocks. Okay, some health, which I definitely needed, especially since there's a checkpoint. Not on this level, but... Uh, it's either this level or the next that introduces... Uh, checkpoints where you can sacrifice one hit point to uh, basically put your hummingbird inside a crystal and that's where you'll restart the level instead of from the beginning. Okay, we'll need to Get some more of the packing peanuts. Avoid the large water drops. Those will take us out in one hit. Okay, back up to full health. Okay, I got through. Dark Obstruction. I think this is the point that Kraken had to call it quits last night. There... There's a lot in this level. So... First occurrence of uh, this little bomb thing. It's where this item's gonna come in useful because it lets us push it close enough without destroying it. Oh, that's a nasty little enemy. cool thing about this game is because of how chill 
the atmosphere is, both in terms of the visual design and the music, just the ambience. You can die repeatedly without getting excessively frustrated, as I just demonstrated there. See? I'm not even mad. Mostly because I hit the checkpoint there. That was a huge help. Hopefully, I've got enough health left for a checkpoint. I do. To really go out of my way to avoid the water droplets in this section. Oh! That one was my fault. <laughs> Amber droplets. Oh, that makes a lot more sense. And don't want Calibra here to get turned into a fossil. Excellent. Glad you freed up from work, uh, St. Beetle. Just got to give a shout out to St. Beetle. They showed up in uh, the Echo Speedrunning Discord a few days ago, and they were just like, oh, hey, I've been playing Echo Jr., and I think I discovered something new. You can uh, deload the uh, seaweed barriers in uh, Octopus Passage and uh, get through that a little faster. So, always excited when we get new bloods, especially when they come bearing new tech. So this section here, definitely want to grab the hourglass, and I've got to get through here without touching those lines, which is very difficult to do. I love how large some of these sprites are, like that scorpion. Okay. There we go! Oh, <laughs> Mist Echo? That's what VODs are for, Rezard. Glad to see you drop in, though. This level's been going quite a bit smoother than it typically goes for me. double chameleons here and our special bullets spread out all over the place
Uh, see, this one's tricky because the way it's flowing, we can't go up through that. So we got to double back. Probably should have picked up another shield before I went. Big think. Oh, that's right, I have to. Thank goodness for the checkpoints. Hopefully hold on to this shield for a minute. Alright. Upgraded weapon. Hopefully, you know, fingers crossed. Okay, and we completed the circuit. Oh, that's right, that's uh, not one of the... Need to use the little bomb thing for that one. But since I don't need any of those items, I think we're just going to wing it, so to speak, and go into the this level with one hit point, which might not have been the best decision, but we're stuck now, so. <laughs> yep. We're going to see a whole lot of the beginning of this level. Some nasty ants. Oh yeah, the uh, 32X added a bunch of uh, additional sound channels and uh, had a uh, Native sample playback, I think. What's really cool is uh, the sound test for Knuckles Chaotix, which uh, shows what's playing on each of the channels available to it. That's a really good way of visualizing the hardware. Okay, so we need to find ourselves the special packing peanuts of destruction. Yeah, the 32X does not get a lot of love uh, from modern Sega enthusiasts. Uh, and, you know, if you're examining it as a business decision, yeah, it was a commercial failure. I mean, it was not the right console for the time for Sega to be releasing. But... It's just such an interesting piece of hardware. If you like exclusives, I mean, 
the library is just like off the top of my head. Uh, Calibri, Knuckles Chaotix, Tempo, uh, Virtue Racing Deluxe, Metalhead, Shadow Squadron. Like, there were only 40 games released for it, and it seems like more than half of them are exclusives. Like, crazy. Okay, that just led us back to the beginning. Oh yeah, Zach's on uh, Mother Base 3D. That was a really interesting use of the hardware. Like, sort of 3D accomplished with 2D. I mean, what I would have liked to see on the 32X was more ports of Sega's uh, Super Scalar arcade games. Like, the port of Afterburner and Space Harrier is fantastic. I would have loved to see Outrun on there, but, uh, you know, we got a good version of it for Saturn, so that was cool. But, uh, you know, the 32X had it had a little bit longer of a commercially viable life. I would have loved to see, well, the thing that everybody thinks should have been ported was uh, Golden Axe Revenge of Death Adder because that's an amazing game and it didn't see a home version until the Sega Astro City Mini was released a couple years ago, which is criminal because that game is incredible. Like, oh, I got baited by that health. Like, if you're a fan of really detailed sprite artwork and large background tiles and everything like that, you know, if you like the kind of artwork you see in this game, definitely check out Golden Axe Revenge of Death Adder if you haven't, because that game is just such a treat visually. And it's uh, pretty fun to play, too. I mean, it's, you know, if you've played Golden Axe, you've played it, you know what to expect, but... Uh, need to go back for... More bullets! That was a little collision that I disagree with. Didn't need to go slow. That's not what we wanted, but I never realized that you get the little puff of feathers when you die. That's awful. Two of the barriers down. I really wish some of you would drop some health. The purple's in this level, though. I'm really into it. Not gonna get fooled again. Oh, 
checkpoint. section where the bees chase you. Also known as, oh geez, spamming C. When you press C, you get a little boost. Oh, we're going backwards now. Oh, thank God. Extra hit points. Okay, can slightly relax now that we have a shield. <laughs> I spoke too soon. I really don't need to be taking any damage prior to this section. up on the shield. Oh. And made it. We made it out of the caves. And back to a substantially more leisure pace. Leisurely pace on this level. I think the difficulty progression of this game, the more I play it, the more I appreciate it. Especially where after certain spikes in difficulty, it gives you a little bit of a breather afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, it is in a typical Ed fashion. It's not immediately obvious to do what to do at the start of the game. But that's part of what makes it fun. But speaking of hummingbirds, uh, in the spring, we set up a hummingbird feeder outside of our house, and uh, for a while we didn't have any sh showing up, but uh, we found uh, this fancy nectar, and as soon as we put that in, my god, we were getting so many hummingbirds. And hummingbirds are pretty territorial, like they get into little fights with each other over the food, but uh, so like quite a few over the course of the day. All right, we're getting close to the end of the game. I don't know if we're going to be able to get all the way through it uh, before Three Dirty Dwarves is scheduled to go up, you know, uh, if we need to go a little bit over, it's probably not a huge deal or anything. But uh, funny thing, you know, I wasn't expecting to play this game for this event. Uh, I was expecting to just like, uh, I don't know, shitpost while Hib was playing it. But uh, 
stepping in, the the really funny thing is this is probably the best that I've ever done at the game. Like I've been having a real good time just chatting with everyone here while doing this. And I love the Mesoamerican vibe that we get in these levels. All right, this is the level where everything good I said about the game gets taken back because see this little uh, this little balloon thing? Well, we've got to push it, but we are not allowed to hit the tip of the tail. That's like a fuse. So what we have to do is we have to initially push it down. And got to push it even a little further than that. I think I can work with this. Now we want to get this weak weapon here and hopefully I can do this with the uh... hourglass here. Oh no! Well, first things first, I should get rid of the big snake. Big snack. Get rid of everything in my way. Because we got to get through this barrier. And the only way to do that is with the little explosive balloon thing. Oh, I really didn't want to open that up. Uh, oh, that, yeah. You don't want to release the uh, caltrops over there. So, get our ping pong balls here. Oh, that pushed it in a direction that I didn't want it to go. Okay, actually, this seems to work pretty well if I get really close to it. Like that. Oh, this, this might be the strat. Maybe the game's not hard. Maybe I was just dumb. Oh my God, I'm gonna make it. Okay, let's shoot it. Yeah, oh no. It's okay though. Frustration is like, way down now that I know what to do. So take out the bad guys. I forgot that I had exactly one hit point. Okay, let's get one more. Here we go. Okay. Pick that up. Push that down a few more times. Okay. We've got the strats now. Uh, but our hourglass ran out. Oh no! Blew ourselves up.
Nope. <laughs> Let's try that again. The bullets are water molecules. Oh, that's cool. Now this is... More than anything else in the game, I would say this is the hardest segment just because of the level of precision that it requires. But I like getting the big boost of movement from hitting all three. Oh, and I forget that the enemies respawn there. I'm going to try taking out some of these jerks. Hopefully. I need something to drop some health. Yes. Okay. Perfect. And I think... I think I can farm these guys. Okay, well, I'm gonna need this anyway. Okay, so let's try this again. Hourglass. Knock it down a bit. Okay, then. If anyone's ever played Earthworm Jim 2, uh, the stage The Flying King. Okay. Made it! Okay, cool. Now we just gotta... Two-part stage. Our friend, the, uh the horrible spiky dragonfly thing. We gotta wait for it. And now... We're in the lair, the big bad's lair. And this basically screams final level due to uh, the number of enemies. Like... <laughs> Itch and sink level. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta make sure everyone feels accomplished, right? <laughs> Yeah, let's let's stick with this. Oh, oh no. Oh dear. <laughs> At least these guys drop health. Man, this level's got more of a pitfall vibe than pitfall on the 32x.
Speaking of, if you're gonna play any version of uh, Pitfall the Mind Adventure, I would not recommend the 32X version because that was an example of a game that used the 256 color mode on the 32X, but did not run at 30 at uh, 60 hertz. It didn't even run at 30 hertz. Most of the time, it seems to be hovering somewhere around 15 to 20. It is rough. It looks good, but uh, I would definitely recommend if you're gonna play a version of that game, go with the Sega CD version. Oh yeah. So we've got a little mini globe holder here. And I, I know there's a faster way of doing this, but it likes to kind of block your path. But it gives you a lot of stuff when it dies, so that's cool. Oh yeah, there's a Genesis version of uh, Mayan Adventure. Uh, in fact, that, that was one of those games that just had versions on like every platform out there. The Genesis version's fine. I just think the Sega CD version has the best combination of smooth visuals and audio. say that the Genesis colors looked better than the 32X for that version because the 32X version does look quite good but uh, it's just the uh, speed issues like it just has a rough time reaching its very low targeted frame rate Yeah, when I say that it's a minor miracle that this game hits 60 hertz with the amount of colors and the amount of detail, the size of the sprites on the screen, uh, like, it, it's no exaggeration. I, uh, I'll point to uh, the 32X port of Mortal Kombat 2, for instance. Uh, runs pretty well most of the time because it's not really using the 32x mu for much other than drawing just the fighters but when you fight goro the frame rate tanks just because goro's a big sprite and we have our little indiana jones segment here though i think yep <laughs> Oh, what's up, Cronoon? Good to hear from you. It's been a minute. Our uh, sleep schedules haven't exactly been syncing up lately. But much love to another Echo Speedrunner. One of these days, we'll get that Tides of Time race into GDQ. But yeah, as is tradition, the last level, also the largest. I forget how many checkpoints there are, but it's it's quite a few, like right there. 
Well, you should be thankful there are checkpoints. Oh. It's also very maze-like, very labyrinthine, and uh, I don't really remember where to go. Yeah, I don't think it came through on the microphone. I said you should be thankful that there are checkpoints there, right? <laughs> I'm always thankful when there are checkpoints. Biggest quality of life improvement in, like, versions of Echo 1 after the uh, initial release was each barrier glyph served as a checkpoint, which was very helpful on levels like Pteranodon Ponds, where there are five barrier glyphs, something like that. All right. I know it can be overlooked just in the in the nature of the whole game, but looking at the detail from the background and the the scrolling background is just amazing. Oh yeah, just absolutely incredible. Like to not only massively increase the amount of colors on screen compared to say a Genesis, but then to go above and beyond with the dithering. It's... It's wild. You know, this is kind of more the direction that I had hoped game graphics were going to go back in the day. Like, 3D is great and all, but... Oh, hey. How do I... Got no idea... how to deal with that thing. But I got what I came for. I got the, uh, I got the wall breakers. So we're just going to push forward. stressful to watch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, see the bullets? A tiny little water molecule. Okay, I think this is... Ah, uh, we got a little ahead of ourselves. Gotta go back... Yeah, I forgot for that guy. Much like uh, in City of Forever and Tides of Time, you gotta trail behind it in order to. Oh. Okay. But can't get too close because you'll aggro him. Some of the detail in the background is just incredible. Made it through, got a checkpoint. Oh, wow. Oh, jeez. Okay. Grab another shield. Waste it. I 
need to power up my weapons. Okay, can't make it past that downdraft. Oop. That's fine. Alright, I think we're probably not more than about five or ten minutes from the ending of this. Okay. Yeah, we're we're gonna we're gonna we're playing a little fast and loose with the schedule. So after um, after you've uh, completed this run, we're gonna take a ten minute break, and then we're gonna set up for um, it was gonna be a race, and now it's actually just gonna be indiv individual runner. Um, Sonic Kustar is gonna be doing three dirty dwarves. Excellent. I'm looking forward to that. I'm excited oh. for some Saturn love. <laughs> That's why they put the checkpoint there. A little bit of Raiders of the Lost Ark action. I love the spiral pattern on that big round sprite. It gives it such a sense of the motion. It's great. Nope. Okay, let me try that without taking a million unnecessary hits. Ah, oh, and the little shield there just... I mean, that's, that's the nice thing about this too, Ed, is that when it comes to the visual styles and everything that you're seeing, nothing seems like it's extraneous. It always looks like it's part of telling the story. Okay. Oh, I don't want to... Oh, geez. I didn't have any good options there because I realized... I don't want to blow up that barrier. Release those nasty little spiky dudes. Okay. Ah, uh, health. Oh, wonderful, wonderful health. Okay. Oh, damn. Oh, I'm gonna have to backtrack a bit, huh? Could have sworn that I had picked up some of those, but... Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. I'm gonna take a little bit of the scenic route. Although even the positioning of that item is smart because it lets you know, okay, you've got a double back, you missed something. I uh, don't want to use that checkpoint though. Whoa. Ed 
just posted in a video of an example of the new 3D Calibri game. Ooh. Definitely save that link because I am going to want to take a look at that. I will put that in the Discord. Hep, definitely pin it. Okay. Shield, health. crack in there. Yeah, Shin, I did a couple extra times. Okay. At least I got a checkpoint. This is kind of reminding me of uh, the last stage of Bloodlines, where it's like, you get to the last level and you think, oh, close to the end of the game. Just kidding. Half of the game is this level. Oh, but here it is. Final boss battle. So as I recall, there are like three phases to this. And this one, first phase was just taking out the turrets. Second phase, taking out... Oh. I just, by getting that checkpoint, ensured that I'm going to have to do the final boss with one health. So, absolute galactic brain strategy right here. Fortunately, there are a lot of shields. Okay, so first one down. I might not be able to watch this right now. I might, I might have to check out because I'm really getting stressed out. <laughs> Blood pressure. I'm old, you know. <laughs> All right. Fortunately, a lot of shields that we can double back on. And this is where it gets to the Toho kind of bullet hell sort of stage. Ah. Oh. I'm just going to double back here and hopefully there are some enemies that I can farm for some health. If not, this is going to be a little tricky. Oh. Nah. I, I think we're just going to lean into the shields. I think the three way shots. With the bounces, ho. We're gonna go. Let's give us plenty of breathing room. One down. Hey, Bethany. Q. 
two down. Bill got her shield. Got this, you got oh, this. Need to double back. Three down. Oh, and now here's the body horror. This enemy is using our hummingbird friends against us. Oh, I'm without shield. Throwing everything at us now. Oh, I think we did it. I think we did it. Yes. Oh. Incredible job. Incredible. That was that was stressful at the end. My favorite ending on the 32X. Congratulations, you saved the world. It's pithy, gets right to the point. Wow, thank you for the GG's, everyone in chat. Uh, Diggity, Zantu, Cheeky, Ed, Sonicu, Slab, Cyphrin, Implosion Retro Gaming. Thanks for the raid, by the way. Ah, uh, Hib, I'm glad that you got to uh, see the end there. Aw, oh, man. Wow, that was... Everything clicked a lot more for me, uh, this playthrough of the game. It was definitely the fastest that I've ever managed to get through it, and... Yeah. Just... Uh, thanks for the GG's, everyone. Get to enjoy... This nice, relaxing credit sequence. Take in the good artwork, the good music. Best programmers in the world. I agree. Hey, uh, hey, uh, do you still want to do like a 10 or 15 minute break? Oh, I I need a break. Yep, I that's mean, what I'm saying. I'm saying people are young. <laughs> yeah. So so what we'll do is we'll we'll do a EPR. We'll do a 15 minute break here uh, between this and the next run, and the next run will be the uh, three dirty dwarves run. All right, that was awesome. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. I'm glad to have been able to share all these excellent games with you and uh i'm just blown away by how much money we've been able to uh raise for a uh, tiny help village over the course of these two days and we've still got a lot of content left and uh everybody remember if we can break a thousand dollars live on stream you're gonna see a uh, diggity go beardless so whoa yeah. cool <laughs> Excellent. All right, well, we'll go ahead. Thank and... you, Grimshins. Yeah, thanks, Grim. Thank you, Ed, for joining me. That was a lot of fun. Have a good one. Excellent. All right, we're going to switch to our uh, our setting up screen. So we'll be back. We'll be doing a break here for uh, 15 minutes. And uh, so we'll come back at uh, 6, uh, 641. We'll do the number. 6, 641. So we'll be back. Do you think we should freshen up just a bit before we go? <laughs> freshen up? You, you want me to shave that before then? <laughs> <laughs> it says oh, audio is stuttery. Okay. Somebody's saying It was a jump. dwarves reference, you'll see. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's fair. I have not played that one uh, enough yet, so. Yeah, it looks like we might need to. Maybe uh, restart I'll some re stuff on I'll the restart the streaming service. We'll still get, we'll stay connected, but I'll restart the streaming service. It'll be fine. Cool. All right. Well, uh, we'll we'll get over to the uh, the setting up screen, and uh, we'll be back here at uh, uh, six forty one central. So just a little bit.